Shalom. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadash. All right, call her law, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Baraka the Yahweh, Baraka the Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadash, Yahweh. <coughs> that's the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world calls God, Yahweh Shai. That's the name of the only begotten, beloved Son, whom the world calls Jesus. His true name is Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakakadash, which means in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right. These are the names that we we must call upon in order to be saved and delivered and the coming destruction, the coming calamity, the coming judgment that is about to face the entire planet Earth. All right, double honor to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule well and who has taught us this truth. Shalom, wa barakim, al peace and blessings to the elect. All right, I'm just going to go into um, Sirach 2, you know, Probably the most famous chapter One of the most popular chapters That we learn when we come into this faith Alright, but it's so potent It's so um, it's so important to, to uh, hammer in Alright, before I get that Let me get James real quick Alright, this is the book of James Alright, just lock you Chapter 1 And verse Uh <coughs> Let's see, 20, I'll start at verse 19, all right? This is James chapter 1, verse 19. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. All right, the saying in the world is, yeah, we have two ears and one mouth. All right, so what? We should be doing at least double the amount of listening that we do um, as speaking. All right, and that's wisdom. All right. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. I'm gonna jump back. Let me get this real quick and Sirach real quick, just to to uh, land back or to harp on that point. All right. Um, Sirach here. It's around about. Search it real quick. There we go. It's 32. This is a Sirach 32 and 7. It says, Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. And all of us are young men. All right. Most of us were young when we woke up to this faith or woke up to this truth. All right. But majority of us still haven't, we haven't been in the truth for it. Like the elders 20, 25, 30 plus years Alright You've been in the truth for a year 4, 10 years 12 years You're still a young man Alright, so the scripture says Speak if it's need of thee Right It says And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked So even if we're asked twice We're still supposed to shemai Which means to listen Alright We're still supposed to hold our peace, man Alright, the scripture say A fool is counted wise When he holdeth his tongue and this is something we got to practice. We got to practice self-control, self-restraint over our mouth, our lips, because that's very dangerous, man. Verse 8, it says, let thy speech be short, comprehending much and few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. So even if you know the answer, all right, it's better to hold your tongue and to be patient and to wait things out and to watch the Lord work. Because ultimately, this is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's program. He's the ruler. He rules in all things in our life, in all aspects, man. All right, and the scriptures say what? Comprehend much in few words. So we want to try to express the point in as few words as possible when we do speak. Verse 9, if thou be among great men, and we are, if we, if you're in the camp, you're in the faith, you're among great men, all right? The scriptures say familiar, familiarity breeds contempt because here it is, you're familiar. Just because you're familiar, brother, doesn't mean that brother isn't great. These brothers that came in before us, that's, that's been laboring longer than us, all right, they're on a higher level than us. The Lord is dealing with them on a higher level, all right? And what? We can't make ourselves equal with them. How do you make yourself equal with a man, all right, that's been in the faith and doing this longer than you? When you're around him, you, you talk when he talks. You try to add on to what he has to say. Nah, we're supposed to be quiet, man, all right, and not make ourselves equal. So it says, if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. 
all right? You're not supposed to use many words because it's very dangerous. All right, let me see. Uh, look for something in uh, James real quick. If I could find it, I'll get it. All right. This is uh, James chapter 3. James 3 and 5 says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire and a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Um, jump. Essentially, when you go into this, it talks about how the tongue, you got to watch your tongue, even though it's a small member. All right, a lot of things can come out of speaking too much, man. All right, so what we got a rule over our tongue, man. I'm going to go back to James 1. All right, this is James chapter 1 and verse uh, 19. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. All right, we got to be slow to wrath because the scriptures say wrath was not created for man. All right. All right. Um, give place unto wrath for vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord. Yahweh Bashim, if we've been wronged, we got to put faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and he's going to rectify it. All right. He's going to judge. And that takes faith. Verse 20 says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. When you, when you, when you lean into that wrath and you get violent and you, and you make um, rash decisions based off of that anger, that wrath that's in you, you get judged, man. We end up doing something that's going to ultimately affect you. It might feel good in that moment because you're pleasing your wrath. But the next thing you know, all types of hell is is added onto your life, man, unnecessarily. All right. Verse 21 says, wherefore, um, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of nightiness. All right. We got we got all this excess that's in this world. We got to lay that apart, man. All right, we got to put it away. We got to mortify our members. We got to be disciplined. It says, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls, save your soul. So that's why I said I sound like a broken record or we're constantly hammering in these scriptures. Because it's important, these scriptures, all right, they're able to save our soul. All right, so the more of these scriptures we eat and we retain and meditate and then when when we're tempted, when we go through different adversities, we apply these different things. It's going, it's going to be a lifesaver. It's going, it's going to save our life, man. So let's go back to Sirach 2. This is Sirach 2 and 1. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And that's what we're doing. We're serving the creator of heaven and earth. We're, saving, we're serving Yahweh by Shemiah All right, so what comes with that is something that they don't teach you in the world because they don't serve the Lord. Is what? You're going to go through temptation. The Lord said, prepare thy soul. We got to prepare our mind. All right, for the adversity, the obstacles that we're going to face, man. All right, and why are we facing obstacles? Because we're on that straight gate. We're on that straight path. And that's the only way unto salvation, which we seek. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Straight means difficulty. And that's what we're entering in when we come to serve the Lord. It says, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. There's a wide path. That leads to your demise. All right. It says, and many there be which go in there. And all you got to do is look around. And you see all these different Israelites that are on a path of destruction. The scriptures say there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the ender of the ways of death, man. All these Jake out here, they don't know the Lord. All right, but they're, they're trying to become an actor or an athlete or, 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 or broadcast media analyst. And whatever they're trying to do. They're chasing after the American dream thinking that's going to lead unto salvation. But really, it's going to lead on to their destruction, man. All right. It says, because straight is a gate difficulty, right? And narrow is the way which leads unto life. So we got to go down this difficult path in order to live, man. 
and few there be that find it, that few is the elect, which we pray each and every day that we, we that we be a part of it. But the scriptures say, um, be diligent to make that calling of election sure. So that's why we're diligent. All right, because what if we're diligent, we're, we're part of the elect. That's an act. That's an attribute or characteristic that the elect are going to have, man. Now let's go ahead and get Second Ezra chapter seven as well. It's the Second Ezra chapter seven, verse six. It says, "There is also another thing: a city is built and set upon a broad field, and is full of all good things. That city is the kingdom of heaven. All right, and and, and everything that's that's bad in this life in this world is going to be done away with in that city. All right, how about Shemuel Shai says he's going to wipe away all our tears. All right, we're going to get family, loved ones." Okay, we're going we're going to not want for anything. We're going to be rich. We're going to have everything that we ever desired, but in righteousness, man, we're going to serve our power. Okay? And that's where we're headed. That's the path that we're on, man. Verse 7 it says the entrance thereof is narrow, but the path that we're on is a narrow path. And it says and it's set in a dangerous place to fall and it's very dangerous. This is this is there's nothing more challenging, nothing more difficult you can do in this life than being this truth, man. All right, and to battle these demons and to be a part of this, this spiritual war and to endure. And guess what? It's only going to get, how about Shemuel Shai? It's only going to turn the heat up. All right, it's hot right now. But how hot is it going to be when all hell is breaking loose on the earth, man? All right, that's why we got to prepare our minds right now. Right now, Like I read in Sirach too, prepare thyself for temptation. We got to get our hearts and our mind. We got to build up our faith right now. All right, because how about Shemuel Shai? It's only going to turn up the heat, man. The adversity that we're going to face is only going to get worse, man. It's just getting started, man. All right. It says the entrance thereof is narrow and it's setting a dangerous place to fall. It says like is Slakia. It says like as if there were a fire on the right hand, on the left, a deep water. On the, on the right hand, if you fall to the right, you're going to burn to death. If you fall to the left, you're going to drown to death, man. All right. Neither of those are cool, man. Neither of that is pleasant. All right, that's why the scriptures say, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. All right, the scriptures talk about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is going to give you long life, longevity, all these different things, man. All right, verse 8, it says, and the only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. The scriptures say, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. All right, because even though we have brothers amongst us, that are exhorting us, that are watching over us, that's giving us sound advice. At the end of the day, this faith is about us. It's about you individually and your relationship with Yahweh Bashim Shah. That's why each and every day we got to examine ourselves continually. Am I doing what is pleasing in sight of the Lord? Am I seeking after the Lord? Am I a man after the Most High's heart? Am I repenting for my iniquity? Am I, am I loving my neighbor as myself? Am I doing the right things? These are the things that we got to constantly, constantly ponder upon, man. Verse 9, it says, If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never should pass the danger set before, how shall he receive this inheritance? So we have to go through this danger in order to get the kingdom of heaven, man. All right, it says, And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. We're Israelites, man. All right, so in order for us to get, get the portion, get the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have to go through this path, man. All right, now let's go ahead and get Timothy's. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Matter of fact, I'll start from the top. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach, Yahushai. This is a grace period, man. Yahweh Shimei Yahushai is a loving and a merciful God. And he's given us this opportunity to receive salvation and to repent, man. All right, we don't have time right now to be weak and to hang your head low and to feel sorry for yourself, man. All right, if you're able to call on the name of the Lord today, all right, and you're, and you're breathing, that's all you need, man. You got, we got to be strong. Let me get this real quick. All right. Um, this is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse, I'll start at verse 11. It says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Because right now we're being chastened, man. The Lord is, he's whipping us. All right, and he's whipping us. 
all right, so that we can be received in his sights, that we can be accepted in his sight. All right, he's getting rid of the impurities, the imperfections about us, man. We're learning about ourselves, man. All right, and it's not a joyous thing. It doesn't feel good, man. It says, but grievous. This is a very grievous process that we're going through, man. It says, nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. All right, but hey, that's why the scripture say, let patience have her perfect work that we may be perfected. We're being perfected, man. Through this chastisement, the Lord is making us, he's healing us, man. All right, verse 12 says, wherefore lift up the hand which hang down and the feeble knees. Stop being weak, man. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Pick your chest up, man. Yahweh Bashim Yashah told us to gird our loins like men. All right, the Lord's not putting anything upon us that we can't handle, man. All right. Matter of fact, let's get this real quick. All right, this is the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Salakia. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting power, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. The power that we serve, he fainteth not, man. It says, neither is weary. The Lord doesn't get weak, man. There's no searching of his understanding. If, if our power, if our Lord doesn't get weak, all right. Why are we getting weak? You see? There's no excuse for us to get weak if we have access to Yahweh Shemesh, we call upon our name. He's going to lift us up. He's going to give us strength, man. Like it says in verse 29, it says he give a power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength, man. And that's what the Lord is doing. You just have, we just have to have faith as a mustard seed. All right, we're going to be able to move mountains. We're going to be able to overcome any obstacle or any adversity that we might face, that we're going to face. It says, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And that's what the Lord is doing. And the Lord's going to give us spiritual power when the time comes. All right, because that's literal. Some brothers are going to actually be flying. All right, we're living in a time of miracles. Brothers are going to be healing. All right, different brothers and some, some believers that are crippled, they're going to be getting healed. All right, there's demons on, on, on different individuals, and the Lord's going to give us powers to, to get rid of those demons off of these different individuals, and they're going to believe unto salvation. Man, we're living in beautiful times, man. All right, now let's go ahead and get, let's finish, let's finish, uh, let's finish a rock. It's a rock too. Like I said, I was just thinking about Sirach 2 as I was driving. I just cut it on. All right, Sirach 2 and 2. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. All right, we got to what? Get our mind right and, and have the spirit of endurance upon us, man, because this is, a, this is a, a marathon, man. We're in this for the long haul. And make not haste in time of trouble. All right, cleave unto him and depart not the way. Cleave unto our power, man, because that's how we're going to get through this adversity. It says that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. We're going to receive thy salvation and be changed, man, at the end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Why do we take it cheerfully? Because we understand what it is doing. Even though it's not pleasant, we know this is, this is leading unto our salvation. This is leading unto us receiving the kingdom. It says, and be patient. Patient means to suffer. All right? And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men. In the furnace of adversity. So what? If the Lord put this adversity upon us, has given us this opportunity to serve him, okay? That means that what? We're acceptable men. And Lord's will, we can endure. Lord's will, we're that gold because all this fire, all this adversity is go that's going to do for us is just make us more pure. All right? So Lord's will, this is edifying. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Rukal, Kadash, the warrants to the apostles and the elders of great millstone of well. Shalom, Wabaraki, and Lopakar, and peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.